strong, lightweight structures have always been a major objective in aircraft design. Today's all-metal aircraft have benefited from the continuing improvement of aluminum and titanium alloys developed to provide increasingly high strength-to-weight ratios. The recent emphasis on fuel efficiency has intensified the search for alternatives which will further reduce aircraft weight and maintenance without any sacrifice in structural integrity. One such alternative, consisting of graphite filaments impregnated with epoxy resin, has been the subject of a systematic development program sponsored by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Advanced composite structures made of these materials have a high strength to weight ratio and offer weight savings in the order of 20 to 30 percent over conventional metallic structures. In addition, imaginative designing, which takes advantage of the unique properties of composite materials, can result in a significant reduction in the number of parts required in an assembly, thus reducing manufacturing costs. This technology was recently applied to the design, development, and testing of an advanced composite elevator for the Model 727 aircraft. Boeing performed the work and contributed 10% of the $8.8 .8 million contract funding. The current production 727 elevator is a built-up aluminum structure consisting of 634 separate parts, accounting for 556 pounds of aircraft weight. The advanced composite elevator reduced the number of parts by 40% and reduced the weight of the assembly by 26 percent. The design criteria required that the new elevator be completely interchangeable with the production metal elevator and provide strength and flight characteristics equivalent to the production elevator. To assure flight quality hardware, extensive testing of materials and process controls was required throughout the program. Tapes of unidirectional graphite filaments and fabrics of woven graphite filaments, all pre-impregnated with thermal setting epoxy resin, were tested for compliance to the previously developed 35% resin content no-bleed Boeing specification. Specimens were also laminated and cured, then subjected to a variety of chemical and mechanical tests as part of the quality assurance program. In addition to these tests, an ancillary test program was established to evaluate the design, materials, and manufacturing processes leading to the ground and flight testing of the full-scale elevator. Data gathered from this comprehensive test program, which included coupon and full-scale component testing in a full range of environmental, static, and fatigue conditions, was invaluable to the engineering, tooling, and manufacturing organizations for evaluating their design and process concepts prior to making final full-scale commitments. The 727 elevator, redesigned to incorporate composite structures, consists of channel section graphite epoxy front and rear spars. Ribs combining graphite epoxy materials with Nomex core honeycomb and upper and lower one-piece skin panels also of Nomex core honeycomb and graphite epoxy materials in a sandwich configuration. The elevator control tabs were of one-piece Nomex core honeycomb sandwich construction having graphite epoxy spar and skins. During cure a Tedlar sheet was bonded to the graphite epoxy skin surfaces not in contact with the layup tool. The opposite sides were painted after curing. These actions taken to provide additional environmental protection to the skins. 
the aluminum nose structure, hinge fittings, actuator fittings, and aerodynamic mass balance panels were retained from the current production elevator. One question requiring an early answer was what kind of fatigue performance could be expected of the composite elevator when subjected to the sound pressure levels experienced in flight? As part of the ancillary test program, a box having the proposed configuration of composite skins, front, spar, and ribs was designed and built. Then tested in control sonic environments for the equivalent of two aircraft service lifetimes. The box was then deliberately damaged in both skin and edge band locations and tested for an additional equivalent lifetime. No growth in the damaged area was experienced. Similarly, a 10 foot long segment of the outboard elevator box was constructed and tested beyond design ultimate load. This test provided ultimate strength, torsional and bending stiffness verification data prior to the production of the full scale component. The diversity of the ancillary test program is illustrated by two other examples. In one, the question centered on the fatigue performance of that area of the elevator in which the composite front spar is spliced to the aluminum actuator fitting. In addition to dry, room temperature fatigue tests, parts were cycled in hot, wet conditions for up to two equivalent design lifetimes. The other example concerns validation of the lightning protection system designed for the composite elevator. Switch neutral, ready to fire. Stand by for lightning discharge. Laboratory five, tests were four, performed subjecting three, the system to 100,000 one, amperes fire. strike. No significant damage was sustained in either the aluminum diverter strip or the test panel. Experience gained in the layup of the test articles was beneficial to the fabrication of full-scale parts. Front and rear spars were laid up and cured using the no-bleed system under production shop conditions. Graphite epoxy material was laid up over pre-shaped Nomex honeycomb core material to form the in-spar ribs. And in the same way, Nomex honeycomb core material was sandwiched between layers of graphite epoxy materials to form the upper and lower one-piece skins. The finished parts were then inspected using ultrasonic non-destructive testing techniques. The full-scale elevators were assembled in the 727 factory area using standard 727 tools adapted to accept composite parts. The production hinge fitting was located in the spar assembly tool. Then the composite front spar was laid in. and the aluminum actuator fittings were positioned for fastening. The remaining metallic parts, nose ribs, hinge, and actuator fittings were attached with titanium fasteners to the composite front spar. Meanwhile, the composite rear spar was assembled. Composite spacers were installed and aluminum hinge fittings were slipped into place prior to joining the rear spar to the elevator assembly.
front and rear spar assemblies were then transferred to the major assembly tooling and the composite in-spar and closure ribs were installed. Throughout the assembly operation, Feng surface sealant was applied to all aluminum elements and fasteners which would be in contact with the graphite epoxy materials to prevent galvanic corrosion in the assembly. The upper and lower skin panels were positioned and drilled using high-speed drilling equipment especially developed for this program. Then the fasteners were installed and the control tabs were attached to complete the elevator assembly. A completed left-hand elevator was dedicated to a thorough ground testing program. Static and fatigue tests were performed to evaluate the structure under a variety of conditions. Once the elevator was static tested to design limit load, it was subjected to a computer-controlled flight load spectrum to evaluate its fatigue performance. Subsequent tests measured deflections, strains, and damage tolerance culminating in the static destruction test, which established the actual load capacity of the elevator. Concurrent with the static test program, the first set of elevators was completed and installed on a Boeing 727 flight test aircraft. Prior to first flight, the elevators were instrumented and ground vibration tested to identify resonant frequencies of the structure for comparison with the responses of the current aluminum elevator structures. Although flight testing was not included in the contract, Boeing conducted a flight test program as part of FAA certification requirements. The flight test program began immediately after the ground vibration data was gathered and analyzed. Flight test results showed that the composite elevators do not alter aircraft stability or control characteristics, flutter placard speeds, or electromagnetic compatibility. All flight tests were satisfactorily completed. This highly successful program has confirmed predicted weight savings, verified structural concepts, and fabrication methods. The valuable experience and information gained from this program will have far-reaching results, serve as a catalyst in the application of advanced composite technology to new aircraft of the future, a basic program objective.